And yet, here we are again with another Fusion Friday. This week, we're going to look at how we can add a rotary indexer or an additional access to any machine sim out there. As you all can see over here on this Herco machine, uh, we went ahead and added a fifth axis to an already fourth axis machine. And in the case of this machine, this is a head table kind of configuration. And thanks to our sponsor, Reynolds Machine, we still have a few spots left for our Lunch and Learn coming up next month at their facility. Again, don't forget to use the link below to get registered for that lunch and learn. Lunch will be provided. Who doesn't like a good free lunch? Let's go ahead and get into the software and see how this is done. Okay, so I have my rotary indexer opened up here and we're gonna go ahead and take a quick glance and see how it's prepped and if it's gonna work for our application. So the key element that we need to keep in mind is in this case, we're adding either a fourth or a fifth axis. On the case of my Herco VMX series, we're actually utilizing this as a fifth axis mounted to the table since we have a head that is a fourth axis already. But looking at this file, the key element is, is we do need two components, one being the base of the rotary and then the other being the actual spindle that is gonna rotate so that when we set this up later, that all works with everything and there is no issues. So again, the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna verify that, you know, I have two separate components here, the base, and the rotary as two separate units so that when we utilize these on our machine, we can use that to our advantage. So let's switch over to our machine. So I'm using the Herco VMX42. As you can see here, this machine actually has a head fourth axis, and then we're adding a table fifth axis. So in our design workspace, we're gonna go ahead and bring in that model. But before I do that, since we have a B axis call out, Let's make a new component, and that new component, we could actually call that our A axis. In this case, I'm gonna to try to keep the format the same as much as I can, use a couple of underscores, and we want this to be on the table. So now that I've added in the component, let's go ahead and go to my design workspace and insert said component. So as that loads in, we got it inside of our actual model. I'm gonna go ahead and slide it way up and out of the way so that we can work with it. I also like to personally position it as if it's gonna go into the machine. So let's go ahead and get it spun up, down, and around. So now we are square to roughly where we wanna have it orientated. We just don't have it placed yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And just like that, we have our A axis, which is our indexer. I'm gonna break the link because we no longer need to have this associated out to anything. Again, not necessarily needed to create the component. I like to create the component to make life easy because one thing I am gonna do is I am going to take that base and I can associate that base with my actual X axis on the table if I want it and things of that nature. I'm gonna leave it as simple as possible for this build. The only other thing I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna utilize joints to be able to place that indexer down on the table. But first and foremost, let's go ahead and do a as-built joint. And the reason why I'm not seeing my as-built joint, as you can see here, is because I have no design history down at the bottom of my screen. So let's go ahead and get that design history turned on. So we're gonna capture that design history. It's gonna rebuild everything we just did very quickly for our timeline. And then this time round, we have an as-built joint. So I want my indexer and my base. And in this case, I like to just make it so that it kind of reacts the way it's supposed to. So let's add our rotary. So now when I move one, they both move together, which is what we were going for. And now we're gonna do a second joint and we're gonna base this off the bottom. And in this case, I'm gonna utilize one of my edges and I'm gonna place that accordingly. So again, is we're gonna grab one of our edges based on our joint motions and we're gonna place that guy down on our table and I'm gonna get it as close to center. So let's go ahead and grab that reference point. And as you can see, it's all twisted sideways. Common mistake again that happens. Let's go back and fix that by changing our selected position on the bottom of our indexer. So again, we're gonna go off this face and now we're gonna grab that edge, which is gonna allow us to snap down to our table. And then I'm gonna bring it in a ways, I don't have any set measurements for this, but I wanna keep it as far back as possible to maintain the maximum travel of my machine when we're actually machining things. So now that we have it placed due to that joint that we made between our two components, we've now placed our indexer on our table. We can go ahead and switch over to the actual 
manufacture workspace. This is going to allow us to change some of the settings in our machine builder. So we go to utilities, we go to our machine builder, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit the machine configuration. So based on the kinematics, we want to add an additional access to the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click X, and then I'm going to click Add, Rotary Access, and that is going to be our A access. In the case of this, this is an unlimited rotary access, so there's no reason to set limits on range. In the event we are going to do an engine block or a head, we may want to limit how much we allow, because if we spin 360 degrees, we might smash that table. And again, that is very easy to sit limited positive 120 to a negative 120, or vice versa, negative 120 to a positive 120. This is completely controllable to all of you. But we're just going to build this very simple in the event that we're going to put some simpler parts on it, not necessarily a head or an engine block. So now that we've added our A access to our kinematics, the nice thing is, is our post processor is going to pick up on that automatically because this post has already been built with that configuration. So we can hit OK here. So now that we've added the kinematics, we need to go in and position and add it to our actual machine setup. So we're going to go to setup machine and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to change my part location so currently it's set the dead center on the table we actually want to reference anything and everything off the face of our platter on center and the same thing goes is we now want to reference our a axis which is that spindle and we want to rotate around a center of rotation the last thing i'll do is i'll actually add in my indexer here to my x-axis so that works nice and easy based on what we have set and now we can test that so if we go ahead and look at our preview machine motions i'm going to move my x-axis and as you're seeing it's just moving my indexer so i need to make a fix there but now my a-axis is spinning just the way it should so let's go ahead and check a few more axes here it looks like we don't have them all set so let's go back and edit that one more time so we're going to go to setup machine configuration I'm gonna expand out my design tree, and then I'm gonna pick everything as needed. So we have our static, which is selected. We now have our Z axis. So we're gonna go ahead and go to the left, pick our Z axis. We're gonna to go to our U axis. So again, is that is now our B axis, right? And then our center of rotation again. So this is where it can get a little tricky and you may wanna turn your design tree off. I'm gonna make it easy by just grabbing that outside ring of that axis. And then we can set our Y axis, again, using the organization on the left. And this is where on our X axis, we want to actually bring in two different items. So I'm using control to pick both of those and hit OK again. So let's test this one more time. So preview machine, we're going to go ahead and slide our A axis, which is going to split. We're going to slide our X axis, which is our table, which is working. Y in and out. U, which is the tilting of our head and then Z axis up and down. So it looks like everything is working based on everything that we've selected. So let's go ahead and finish this out and save it. So now that we have it saved, we're gonna give that a second to save. We're gonna go ahead and import that. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch screens and we're gonna open a new file and work from scratch. So now I have my blank file opened up. Let's go ahead and switch to the manufacturer workspace. I'm gonna go ahead and go to my actual milling tab, and then I'm gonna utilize my machine library. So we wanna bring in that machine into our library to be able to utilize it. So based on my actual file here in the cloud, I'm gonna say import, and then I am gonna select that machine right here from my list. So this was the last area where I've saved that file seven seconds ago, I'm going to select it. It's gonna go ahead and bring that file in. And now that it's been saved, we can double check a few things here. So as we're seeing, we have a, a Y, X, A, and a Z, and a U. That could be also a B at the end of the day, if that's how you wanted to signal it. In my case, I'm leaving it just as a U versus a V and a W. Either way, neither way is overly wrong at the end of the day. So now that I've actually imported that in, let's go ahead and give it a test by opening a file and running it through a couple of things. So I'm going to go ahead and open a file inside of my demo parts. So a lot of you have probably seen some of these parts. They are in the default Fusion library. I'm going to go ahead and grab this intro part right here, which is going to be way too big for that platter. 
but that's more than okay. So we'll give this a second to open up. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and swap out because that was a different machine. So let's go ahead and select our newest machine that we built. Again, verifying that that one there is the Y, X, and Z, U. We actually want the one with the A axis. So we're going to select that. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and position everything. So we'll give this a second to load. So now that that's loaded in, we go ahead and go to our part position. And as you can see, based on everything and anything we're doing, I need to change my X, Y, Z orientation before anything. So let's say we actually wanted our Z axis pointed this way as such. I'm going to work off of the actual selected point, which is going to be the bottom of my indexer, because that's going to be where I mount to my face. My X axis is now pointed towards my rotary. So when we go back inside the Herco, it's going to look a little funky at the moment, but we can go ahead and go based off selected points again on our jigs and fixtures sliding that over and placing it exactly where we want it. So I'm going to hit OK, and then we're going to create some tool paths here. So in this case, we have our adaptive clearing and our roughing. I'm going to go ahead and regenerate these two. And in this case, I need to turn on tool orientation because I want to approach this straight on. So again, we're going to pick our Z axis over here. We're going to hit OK. And now we're coming in from the side. And then we're actually going to hit one of those pockets. Let's go ahead and swap that out and get that a little cleaner. So we're going to start from a selection height of here. And now let's see what this looks like. So we're going to go ahead and simulate with machine. And we need to reposition ourselves because it came in a little crazy. And as you can see, again, that part was not necessarily designed for this configuration. It's a very small part. We may need a riser underneath that, but we're canted at that angle, which is causing a collision due to collision detection, which is great to see that everything is working as needed to get that to happen. So let's take a step back here real quick. And for this demonstration purpose, I'm just going to do one of these orientated sides. Again, we're going to simulate with machine. And from that, we have another collision, and I know why we have this collision. And the reason why we have this collision is because we never told the machine the tool, as you can see by this giant length. So again, we could always go back and fix this at any time. And I'm going to start by actually exiting out of the machine in my file and hitting Save. And then if we go back to the machine itself, we could go ahead and make those changes. So again, as we're going to go back to our machine builder, we're going to do our setup. I failed to select where the tool is going to sit, which should sit directly inside the tool holder or the spindle of the machine. That only makes sense. And again, we're going to hit finish. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and save that. And just like that, we have a new version of that machine that should come through automatically. So let's go ahead and bring that back in. So we're going to go back and we're going to select that machine. It's telling me that there's a new version automatically found. So we're going to let that pass through since I just updated my machine configuration. So let's place that part. Again, we're going to go back to our setup here. You can see how everything kind of came through in one clean motion. And let's simulate with machine. So looking at our simulation this time, you can see our tool and our actual machine is much closer to where it needs to be. Again, I'm turning off the stock. Let's go ahead and make our base a little more transparent so we can see what's going on. And just like that, we're coming in based on adding a fifth axis in this case to a four axis machine. But at the end of the day, the idea is still the same to get that rotary on the table and get everything set up. Thanks again for watching my Fusion Friday videos. As always, we want more comments and likes. The more things that you tell us that you guys want to see, the more video content we can make. Don't forget to like and subscribe.